My name is Shane Barubi. Um, just wanted to, a little about me. I am a true full stack developer. Um, and I'm not going to take too much time to go into details about myself. I've done CI, CD, database work, back end work, front end work. Um, done a pretty extensive Angular. I did actually work with Aaron Frost at one point for a few months there when he uh, I was one of the first employees with Hero Devs, actually. So, um, and so I'm just going to kind of go over some just some tips about full stack development in especially in regards to angular because I know this is a it's an angular conference. <clears throat> so some of the tips there's really just remembering to consider angular in terms of the full stack angular is really only a it's really only a part of the picture and there's areas where it works well and there's really areas where you probably should do something else. <laughs> it's not that it doesn't work it's that it's not the best option for that area. Um, so if you're working on backend, for instance, it's, I, I find that it's useful to try and gather the data that the front end needs into a, into a call. Um, the data that the particular front end is calling for, make sure that gather that all into one call rather than forcing the UI to make multiple calls to gather information. Uh, in, including actually if, so if you have a list of data try to package that into a call because I find that uh, JavaScript actually goes is able to iterate through lists a lot more effectively than trying to ping back and forth the multiple different calls gathering chunks of the list and yeah it's like okay just send the whole list over and let JavaScript handle it unless of course it's a really 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 big list so um in terms of the database, uh, try to store things in such a way that allows for the dynamic nature of the data. When I'm when I'm architecting a database, I am more concerned about what the data looks like when it's stored than I am about what it's going to look like when it's displayed. If that makes sense. There, I mean, there's a whole API, and then you've got Angular, which has its own like section of logic before you actually get to the. There's two layers before you actually get to the display. So I'm less concerned about making sure the data looks nice when it's stored and more concerned about being able to store it dynamically and being able to handle all of that when it's in the database. But then, you know, utilize the back end layer to put the data together for a call from the front end. I would not recommend doing one call per page because what's the point you have multiple pieces multiple sections in the page you want to make sure that you can call and keep your whole site responsive and dynamic try to package you know calls to the back end in such a way that it makes it easier for the back end to process data so when you're calling from the front end into the back end um try to remember that the data i should say try to remember that back end developers most of the time do not have a pretty UI where they can see everything changing neatly on the screen. Most of the time they're looking directly at the code or they're looking at a big fat block of JSON. <laughs> so try to package things in a way that makes it a little easier for the back end guys to gather the data you're looking for or to process the data you send them so they could store it in the database. Um, it helps to structure the folders on the front end. Uh, if you can structure them in the same way that the back end is structured. So it assists any back end developers in locating files and assisting front end developers if they need to. Um, it also assists on the other end where the front end developer, if you need to dig into the back end, they can actually locate things quickly and easily. But that being said, this is all dependent on your project. And, you know, if your project calls for a really extensive detailed back end architecture and you have no need to do that on the front end, don't do it. <laughs> don't rely too heavily on any one area of the stack. Um, I, I get this. This is probably a controversial opinion, but I get this all the time. I get like your database guys and they're all like the database should handle everything. It does all the heavy lifting. That's like, no, but then you get your back end guys who are all like the back end should do all your heavy lifting. Don't do anything on the front end. Don't do anything on the database. Back end, back end is where it's at. And then you got some of your front end guys who are all like, what the heck do I need the back end in the database for? I got all my heavy lifting right here in the front end. 
it's like, okay, <laughs> no, <laughs> let the database handle the data. And it does some things very quickly, very easily. And it's very good at doing some things, but it's not the easiest thing to develop functions for. Whereas the back end is good with the logic and connecting different systems, but it, why would the back end handle display logic? It shouldn't be handling that. The front end is the piece that handles the display logic and receiving input from the user. So, but on the other hand, the front end also does not have a ton of power that would be necessary to handle heavy data processing. So try to keep those pieces in mind and try to try to balance the power is what I what I like to say balance the power let the database handle its section let the back end handle its section let the front end handle its section uh, one thing i wanted to also briefly touch on is just making sure that you understand cicd a little bit you know you don't need to go into totally everything that it, it requires but you want to make sure that your code is testable and that it will easily fit into a pipeline um, the ideal setup with continuous integration, continuous development. For anyone who doesn't know what CICD stands for, it's continuous integration, continuous development. Uh, the ideal setup for that is that when you have finished testing your code and you put your PR up, someone approves the PR, it then goes through a series of automated steps and automated testing. And assuming it passes everything, it goes right into production without requiring any manual intervention. So that's all I got, just some quick um, tips on full stack development and just kind of in regards to how Angular kind of fits into that whole picture of things. Mm -hmm.